Okay, welcome. This is my Routing and Switching Essentials, Chapter 10. Today we're talking about specifically DHCP, or Dynamic Host Control Protocol. So we're going to be talking about basic DHCP. What is DHCP version 4? And what is DHCP version 6? And we're going to end with a nice little summary. So the objectives are to be able to talk about how to implement DHCP, the client, the server, basic configuration for all of the appropriate versions. So again, DHCP version 4 is specifically for IPv4. DHCP version 6 is for IPv version 6. This is also going to allow us to talk about Slack, and that is a version 6 type protocol. Alright, so without further ado, let's hop into our version 4 material. So DHCP uses three different types of address locate or allocation methods. We can manually allocate, automatically allocate, or dynamically allocate. So what's the differences? So manual allocation, the administrator assigns all pre-allocated IPv4 addresses to clients, and DHCP will communicate only the IPv4 addresses to the devices. So you can think of this as more like a reservation. I am pre going to set up your MAC address so that you're going to receive that specific IP address and that's it. But that means you have to manually allocate the specific MAC addresses so that they receive the appropriate ad uh, IP addresses. So there's also the automatic allocation where the DHCP will automatically assign a static IPv4 address permanently to a device. Selecting it from a pool of addresses, that means no reservation. It just, you get that permanently assigned address and that's it. Then there's the dynamic allocation. And that is dynamically assigns or leases an address from a pool for a specific amount of time, normally seven days. So I'm going to give you an address and I'm only giving you it for seven days. After that seven days, I may take it back from you and I may reassign it or I may not. Just kind of depends. Normally in ISP, for home users, you get the dynamic allocation. It gives you an address for X amount of time. And it may give you back the same address, but it may not. Just kind of depends. So our basic operations, when a client comes up, sends a DHCP discover broadcast and it would basically state I would like to request an address the server will then send a, a unicast response back to it known as a DHCP offer and it will go something like I am DHCP server here's an address that I can offer that way it's the beginning of this handshake the DHCP request will be responding as a broadcast and it will go I will accept this IP address. The DHCP server will respond with a unicast acknowledgement. Your acceptance is acknowledged. Essentially, okay, I'm giving you that address. And that's called the DHCP ACK, A C K, short for acknowledgement. And that's how the client will get its address. It's two parts from both sides. So the DHCP message format will be this type of format. We have our traditional head, header, our client IP address, your IP address, the server IP address, the gateway address, the client hardware address, the server name, the boot file name, the DHCP options. So this is going to be a specific type of header or a specific type of packet for our client. So that way it will have its Ethernet frame, the source and destination MAC address, the source and destination IP address, and then the appropriate datagram. And the datagram will have all of the appropriate information. So how do we configure it? A Cisco router running Cisco IOS 
can be configured to act as a DHCP server. Not saying this is a good or a bad thing, it's just we can have our hardware do it or we can have a server do it. And in this example, we are having our hardware do it. So, first thing we want to do is set up an exclude address. Then we'll set up a pool name. And then we're going to define the range of addresses that we can use. So, here we're going to list our exclude addresses. These are going to be addresses that we do not want to be able to hand out. Then we're going to go with our name. Here we're calling our DHCP pool. We're calling it LAN pool 1. From that LAN pool 1, we will give it the network, say the beginning portion of the network and the subnet mask. That's why you have to make sure to include the exclude addresses. That way, we can set reservation of addresses. So here we've been able to state what addresses will not be used. So we are excluding 1 through 9, and we're also excluding 254. That way, between this network and broadcast, or between the network and its broadcast, we will not be using specific addresses. For example, we already know 10.0, that's going to be our ID. Our range is going to use 1 through 254. Sorry, I'm using a mouse to do this, so my writing is slightly off. 1 through 9 are preset aside. So that means we're going to be able to use 10 through 253 because we've excluded 1 through 9 and 254. If you want to disable DHCP, you can do the no service DHCP command, and that will disable it. All right, let's go on. Next slide. So how do you verify the server information? Oh, you know what? I forgot to talk about one important thing. Do not forget to set the default router. Do not forget to set the DNS. And make sure to set the domain name. Those are important. I talked about the network portion, but I forgot to bring up how to set the default router, how to set the DNS server. You can set two DNS servers, and you make sure to set the domain name. At the very end, do end, because you'll notice that when you're doing the configuration, you're going to be at the DHCP hyphen config prompt, and so all of these commands will be for the DHCP. You can do exit to exit out of that prompt. Okay, now we're done with this part. Let's go to verifying. How do we verify? We can do a show running config, pipe in the section DHCP, we could do show IP DHCP binding, show IP DHCP server statistics, or on the PC, once you get the appropriate address, do an IP config slash all at the command prompt, and you should be able to see all of the appropriate commands. Alright, so now let's move on to our relay. So, DHCP will use broadcast to communicate to the DHCP server. What happens if you don't have the ability to have the DHCP server in that network? You can set a helper address that will forward the broadcast to a specific unicast address. And here it is. The command is IP helper. Sorry, the command is IP helper address and then the IP address. That way, it will forward that broadcast to a specific unicast address. So, if uh, you need to do it, that's important. Normally, helper addresses aren't really covered so much in CCNA, but more for the CCMP material. Also, what happens if we need to set a DHCP address for our, our interface? Up until this point, we've always been manually doing it. But if you need to set a DHCP address on a outward-facing interface, the command would just be IP address DHCP. That way, the interface itself will 
request their address. So in a normal setting, like a home network, the DATP address will come from the ISP and our interface, outward facing, will get the IP address from our ISP. Again, IP address DATP will allow us to do that. So troubleshooting. Task 1, resolve any conflicts, verify connectivity, test if all those cells test with a static address just to make sure, verify the appropriate switch ports, and verify from the same VLAN or subnet. So let's verify routing the ATP configuration. You can always do the appropriate show commands. So what about debugging DHCV version 4? That's always an option. Alright, so let's go ahead and move on to our DHCV version 6 material. So there is this thing called Stateless Address Auto Configuration, also known as SLAC, S-L-A-A-C. This is a method in which a device can obtain a global unicast address with the services of DHCP. So essentially, PC1 will send a router solicitation, RS, and it will basically go, I need a router advertisement from the router. And that will be an IPv6 multicast address, or multicast. The router will return a router advertisement here is your prefix, your prefix length, and other information. And that will be an IPv6 all node multicast. So what will happen after that, the PC will create a IPv6 version global unicast address. After generating its own ID, it can use the prefix and prefix length from the router to create its own address. Step four, it will duplicate address detection and it will verify there are no other addresses that are using it. So it will send out an IPv6 solicited node multicast. Basically, it's going to check to see if any other addresses are the same. So, the router advertisement will have a RA message. That message should show use the information in this RA message to obtain the additional information for an ADATP server version 6 if it has one. The router advertisement will also may send do not use information in the RS message, obtain all information from the DATP server. So here are two different types of statements. This one is going to use information from the RA and the DATP. This message will only use the DATP server. Because there's going to be different ones. If you don't have a DATP server, it will use the Slack only. So the Slack options, RS, the router solicitation. So RS will be sent that way. The RA will be sent that way. The RA will have different appropriate flags depending on the appropriate response. So the stateless DATP version 6 option. RS to the router. RA back to the PC, but the, this time the RA will say, here's the DHCP server, obtain it that way. And to the PC, we'll go to the DHCP server, and the DHCP server will act as a response. A stateful DHCP, the RA message will tell me that I need to contact specifically this guy. So the RS, the RA, the RA will say, don't use any of my information, contact the DHCP server. So this PC go that way and we'll get the appropriate information from the DHCP server. So steps for DHCP version 6 
we've already covered this part over here. We're not going to have to recover the RS and RA. We're more focused on how we get the information from the DHCP server itself. So once PC1 gets told, use the DHCP server, it will solicit a response to all the DHCP servers. It will then, the DHCP server itself will return an advertisement as a unicast address. Then the PC will request or information request, which via unicast, back to that specific DHCP server. And then finally, the DHCP server will send a reply, which will be a unicast. Pretty similar steps in IPv version 4, but different titles. Alright, so now that we understand how the function works, how do we program it? So to configure a router as a stateless DHCP version 6 server, first thing we have to do, make sure we turn on IPv6 unicast routing. Without that command, no IPv6 will work. So next, DHCP pool and give it a name. You set up the appropriate DNS, you set up the appropriate domain name. And then here, we go ahead and we program the appropriate address, the DHCP server, and the name, and any other uh, config flags that we need. That way it will respond on that interface. If we do not do this interface, it will not know what interface to respond to our request on. So this is not going to be globally configured. This is going to be configured per interface. That way we can have appropriate DHCP servers on specific interfaces. So to configure the router as a stateless DHCP client, navigate to the appropriate interface, IPv6 enable, then IPv6 address autoconfig. Autoconfig will let it use the Slack. So verifying stateless DHCP version 6 connectivity. We can always do a show IPv6 DHCP pool. That will show us the pool information. Also, we can do a show IPv6 interface, or we could do a debug IPv6 DHCP detail command. All right, so that covered a lot of our basic DHCP setup for version 6. But how do we configure a router as a stateful, not stateless, but stateful DHCP version 6 server? Again, make sure we set up unicast. We're going to set up our appropriate pool with pool name, except this time we're going to set up our addresses, our DNS, and domain name. And then at the appropriate interface, we will put the uh, address, the pool name, and any of the appropriate flags. That way, this guy right here will be pulling the information from our pool of addresses. How do we verify? Show IPv version 6 DHCP pool, show IPv6 DHCP binding, or show IPv6 interface. You're going to have to get used to the show commands just because me going over them won't do you justice. So make sure to do some basic troubleshooting with our show commands so that you get familiar with the appropriate output that they're going to be showing. So configuring a router as a stateful DHCP version 6 relay agent. And just like we did with IPv4 for our helper addresses, we are actually going to do an IPv6 DHCP relay destination instead of the IP helper hyphen address in the address. Instead, we use IPv6 DHCP relay destination then the IP address. So troubleshooting. 
pretty similar steps. Resolve the conflicts, verify allocation method, test static addresses, verify the switch ports, and verify subnet slash VLANs. So how do we ver uh, verify the router DHCP configuration? We could always do uh, specific show commands. Here is what our stateless DHCP server should look like. Stateless. That's what we're looking for. Remember, stateless, you don't give an address pool. This is what our debug should look like, and this is what the output we're looking for are the solicitations and or the interface pool information. Oh, I went back, sorry. And uh, that's actually it for our DHCP. Remember, manual automatic dynamic allocations for IPv4 and Slack and stateful addressing for IPv6. I wanted to thank you guys and hope you guys have a great day. You know what? I got one more summary slide. Remember our troubleshooting steps. And there's our last slide. Thank you guys very much.